When you um when you work with clients, and again, you do address this book, but I I I, I want to make this clear to our listeners and 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 watchers. Um, you know, when it comes down to value a company, John, uh, there's you know, there's the balance sheet approach and there's the income statement approach, right? There's the or the cash flow approach. Um, you can look at a balance sheet and determine its assets. Um, and and you know, the big question mark is what goodwill is. But you can come up with a valuation of what a company is just by looking at what their, you know, what what their assets are worth. But then again, you can have a different picture altogether when it comes to a company's earnings or cash flow. So which approach do you normally recommend to your clients when they value a company, when they come up with a purchase price? Should they focus on a on a target balance sheet or should they focus on cash flow? Or is it both or does it depend? I learned from a really good operator of pretty good size operations how important the balance sheet is. Mm -hmm. That said, the balance sheet is nothing when it comes to valuation compared to uh, what is the cash flow return on investment. That's really all it is, is small businesses. And you have to make sure the balance sheet is in good shape, Mm -hmm. uh, that there's not not a lot of need for asset replacement that perhaps inventory is usable and saleable that you're not going to be just you saying, oh, there's a million dollars of inventory, uh, but only uh, two thirds of it is any good mm-hmm. kind of thing. So we get into the cash flow of the business. I see. Um, there are all kinds of statistics. We subscribe to three different databases, services on done deals information, and you can look at it and you can say what you know, the average for this kind of industry is companies, you know, say you're doing, uh, you know, five to 15 million in sales sell for an average of five times earnings, right. five times EBITDA. Right. And, you, you know, it's a good starting point, but it's an average, right? Right. And an average is some are above and some are below. Very few are right on the average. So you, you know, a simple way of looking at it, and this is not a valuation or appraisal or anything is I've got a company that's right in the middle. They're doing 10 million in sales. They're making, you know, industry, the average of uh, 15% profit, million and a half dollars, EBITDA, we'll call it. And w- should they sell for five times that million and a half? Well, sure. what if one... What if you got two companies like that and one has 80% of their sales to three customers and one has 80% of their sales to 80 customers? Right. And we got a bigger risk in the first one. Right. You know, what if you got a management team and an owner's bragging, yeah, these people have all been with me 35, 40 years. Well, that means your management team's about to retire. Right. So you look at the risk factors, you look at the potential for growth. Where's the low hanging fruit? Um, I had a client buy it, they bought the second business. And the business doing a little under a million dollars in earnings and they paid six and a half. Hmm. And it sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. Within nine months, they were up 50% because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they saw what they could do. Right. They saw what wasn't being done. 